Try to count how many women leaders you have encountered in history. Or simply count how many women have been mentioned, highlighted, or given a spotlight in the course of history. It is hard to do, right? Because the spotlight has continuously shied away from women, leaving us with crumbs and having to scramble to our feet to retell their stories. Mostly, they were seen as adjuncts and appendages to the men in their lives, and were pushed through the footnotes of historical accounts. Oh, how we hope that it is an exaggeration. However, not everything is lost. Keep in mind that this is our work. Now, let us all be ready to blow our minds with the awesomeness of Teresa Nay Isa Magbanua, a woman, a brave leader, and a renowned revolutionary against all the colonizers who set foot in our homeland. Like how Joan of Arc, arguably a much-known heroine in history, fought against the English in the Hundred Years' War by leading an army, Teresa Magbanwa took up arms and led multiple battles during revolutions. So, if you do not know Teresa Magbanwa, then buckle up and be prepared to listen to how a woman led an army to free her land from unjust oppression. A historic reminder that you are not just a woman, but a woman. Teresa Magbanwa, or Nanay Isa, was born in Pototan, Iloilo, on October 13, 1863. She was born to Don Juan Magbanwa and Doña Alejandra Ferraris, both belonging to prominent families in their community. Don Juan Magbanwa was a judge who sat on the court of first instance in Iloilo City, while Doña Alejandra Ferraris was the daughter of Captain Benito Ferraris. These familial ties would lead to many opportunities for Teresa at the onset of her life, especially her education. Teresa Magbanwa received remarkable education for a woman in the colonial period of Spanish, wherein very few received education. What more a woman? She began her formal education at the Colegio de San Jose in Haro, Iloilo. And later, due to her family's financial capabilities, she was able to attend three different exclusive girls' schools in Manila, which were the Colegio de Santa Rosa, Colegio de Santa Catalina, and Colegio de Santa Cecilia. After passing her Carrera de Maestra in Manila, Teresa Magbano pursued a postgraduate teaching degree to qualify for the position of Cuarto Suprema. She obtained the degree of Maestro Titulada Superior from the University of Santo Tomas. This educational attainment was a feat on its own since women of this time were highly limited to learning home arts or entering the monastery. Then, Teresa went home to Potatan, where she also practiced teaching. She was also said to be a disciplinarian, but earned admiration from her students due to her great pedagogy. After four years, she relocated to Sara, Iloilo where she continued her practice. Not only did the place bring her an opportunity to hone her craft, but it also led her to her husband, Alejandro Balderas, a well-off landowner. During their marriage, Teresa eventually gave up teaching to devote her time and energy to their life together. However, they were unable to bear a child. Despite this, she channeled her energy into helping and taking care of their land. It gave her the opportunity to learn how to ride a horse and use a gun. Teresa was said to be a great horsewoman and an even greater markswoman, another asset that will contribute to her success as a leader in the revolution. Speaking of the revolution, Teresa's involvement in the movement started on October 1898, where she learned that her two younger brothers, Pascual and Elias, enlisted. Against the complaints and protests of her husband, Teresa was not dissuaded from joining the revolution, but rather strengthened her conviction to join. There was no stopping her. She even argued that she was a better marksman than Brigadier General Perfecto Poblador, her uncle and chief of operations of the Northern Zone, during her conversation with the general himself. She was not afraid to assert her position and fought the notion that Filipina's position in the movement was only composed of traditional roles. She was an embodiment of many things of what a woman is, not a meek follower, but a person with a mind of her own. Shortly after this conversation, she earned the right to lead a battalion of Bolo troops. Thus, Teresa Magbanua is acknowledged as the first woman to join the revolution in Visayas. A really astounding title, if I might say. 
In her command, the revolutionary army in Panay gained many successful battles. The first one under her belt was at Barrio Yating, Pilar Capiz. On horseback, Teresa led her troops against the Spanish colonizers. This victory earned her the title Visayan Joan of Arc and the dear endearment Naisa for how she led and took care of her troops. However, the battles won by Naisa did not stop there. On December 3, 1898, she won the battle at Sapong Sara. In the following year, 1899, she successfully defended the Balantang Takas Hiabuan line. And on March 10, 1899, the Battle of Balantang Haro against the Americans, who suffered a big number of casualties. What is more interesting? All these victories were won with a fewer number of men and weapons, which is a testimony to both her fighting and leadership skills once again. Teresa Magbanwa continued to fight through the Philippine-American War, but was never given any official post or recognized as a commission officer. What led her to lie low from the movement was when her two brothers died consecutively. She surrendered to the Americans in 1900 and returned to farming, aka her life before the war. When the Second World War broke out in the Pacific in 1941, Naisa once again helped out in the revolution. Although gone are her days of riding on horseback and fighting with her great marksmanship, Naisa found another way to contribute to the war efforts done by the Filipinos. She gave financial and material support, like food and other supplies, to the movement. Finally, after the long-sought liberation was attained by the Philippines, Teresa Magbanwa, now a widow, was able to finally rest. She moved to Zamboanga and resided there until her death in August 1947. Her burial was unannounced and intimate, only attended by close friends and living relatives. The life of Teresa Magbanua, Nai Isa, or Visayan Joan of Arc has been full of struggle and bravery. It is evident how she detached herself from the stereotype women were put into, before and now. Her passion and commitment coupled with her outstanding greatness on the battlefield all equated to a wonderful symbol of women's empowerment. Teresa Magbanwa proved time and time again that regardless of gender, you can be someone you wanted to be. May it be a well-educated person, a passionate fighter, or a loving partner. Whatever you want to be. And so, that brings us to the end of the video. Do you think that Teresa Magbanwa deserves more spotlight in Philippine history? Do you have any women figures you want to talk about? Do not forget to comment down below. We'd love to hear what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to learn more with us. Thanks for watching.